Uh, P is who's it now? <laughs> Should he sit first? You might as well sit down, my dear. Be here all night. <laughs> <laughs> The long election campaign uh, must have been a great strain for you, Mrs. Daphne. I, I don't suppose you've seen much of your husband for the last few weeks. Oh, no, Your Majesty. I saw him all the time. I was his driver, you see. I, I drove him everywhere during the campaign. Oh, dear. How, how very trying for No, not at all. I like it. But anyway, if I didn't do it, I don't know when we'd get to see each other. <laughs> Sadly, he doesn't want some stranger driving him, does he? Not with everything he's got on his mind. Something I could do for him, you see. You must have driven many hundreds of miles. 3,597. <laughs> <laughs> How on earth do you know that? He loves knowing exact things like that, Clem. He loves knowing exactly the number of miles I've driven today, exactly how many I'll drive tomorrow, and the names of everyone in his class at school. Everyone in his class at school? He's 61 years old. <laughs> <laughs> I came home one night during the war. And he'd just written out the names of every boy in his class at Haleybury School when he was 13. Can you believe that? Remarkable. <laughs> anyway, if I didn't drive him, who would iron his trousers? <laughs> <laughs> iron his trousers? And yes, uh, I carry a portable iron, you see. Well, these days, you can't really rely on hotels and that sort of thing. Not with the rationing and everything. So I carry... Well, not that it always works. And the iron doesn't always work? Oh, no, the iron always works. <laughs> Clem, you see, he would insist on carrying his pipe and his tobacco pouch in his pocket. In his trousers pocket? No, in his jacket pocket, you see. And he doesn't give a suit a chance. Pulls it right out of shape. Now, I've told him over and over... Yes, I'm sure you have. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't do any good. Well, he has a lot on his mind. I expect he forgets. He always grunts when I tell him. He grunts? Yes, grunts, but it doesn't make any difference. How very upsetting. Uh, not really, not to me. I like to hear him grunt, you see. <laughs> <laughs> that way, I, I know he's there. <laughs> well, uh, we must see if we can relieve you of your chauffeuring duties, uh, Mrs. Atlet. I'm sure the government car and the chauffeur could be made available for the Prime Minister. Oh, no, you mustn't do that. <clears throat> I mean, we like it as we are. You see, we have those long days together, and when I'm not sure of the way, well, he has the atlas on his knee, and when I do know where I'm going, he does the Times crossword, and then, every now and then, he'll put a, a bald sweet into my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Very affecting scene. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Mr. Airtie, uh, who must allow me to insist, these long journeys must be a great strain for your wife. It's hurt to keep things as they are. But I insist, Mr. Airtie, and uh, you must allow me to insist. I'd rather have my wife driving me. Thank you, sir. Well, very well, I'm sure the Prime Minister has many uh, pressing matters to attend. Yes, yes, come on, Clem. You must think of His Majesty all night. Anyway, I don't want the car to come down too. You know, sometimes it takes ages to start it again. Do you remember we were up north somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> and we had the artist to fill pot the Daily Herald to crack the engine. <laughs> he was covering the election, you see, and we'd given him a lift. Well, I didn't really want to trouble Mr. Philpot when the car wouldn't go, but Clem had a clean suit on. Good night, Mrs. Adley. Good night, Mr. Adley. Good night, Mr. Adley. Good night, Mr. Adley. Good night, Mr. Adley.